Welcome to our review on Atom Economy and what we're going to do in this little presentation is find out how we can actually use that calculation to work out how efficient the process actually is. Now the key thing we've got to remember is that when we're thinking about industrial processes we want to minimize the amount of waste because if we've got an industrial process that's going to be generating a lot of waste materials or they're going to be using a lot of energy or a lot more raw materials than they should, then that's wasteful. So what we find is it's not a sustainable process. What we've got here is the definition for atom economy. Now, quite simply, all that is, is the proportion of reactant atoms that end up in our desired product. So when we're looking at our chemical equation, it's just the ones that have become the product we wanted to make compared to, obviously, the number of reactant atoms we started with. So this is the equation that you need to use to calculate the atom economy. Now, one thing to note is that they will not give you this equation on your exam paper, so you've got to memorize it. And the equation you've got to remember, then, is that your atom economy is the molecular mass of your desired product, so the thing you want, divided by the total molecular mass of all of the products and then you multiply that by 100 to get your actual answer as a percentage. The next thing we really need to know is what does that percentage actually mean? If we end up with a low percentage, so one that's closer to zero, then that tells us we've got a low atom economy. Now what that actually means is only a very small number of those atoms that we started with in our reactants are actually being converted into the product we want. So that tells us there's a lot of waste going on there. If, however, we've got one that's 100% atom economy, then that means that every atom that we have in our reactants has been converted into the product we want. So that is a very good process. And the example that you've already looked at to do with that is the harbour process, which is how we make our ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen. That does have an atom economy of 100%. What we're going to do now then is go through how to actually carry out this calculation with an example. So the example I've given you here then is that hydrogen can be made by reacting carbon with steam. They will give you the word equation in your actual exam as well. So that's carbon plus water makes carbon monoxide and hydrogen. Now the first step that you actually need to carry out here is to actually work out what the useful product is in the question. And what I suggest you actually do as a little exam tip is to underline it in the question itself so you remember that's the useful thing that's what we're actually making that's what we need to actually look at so in this case hydrogen is our useful or desired product step two then is to actually work out our molecular masses for all of the products now we don't need to worry about anything on the left hand side of the arrow all we need to focus on is what's on the right hand side so just the carbon monoxide and the hydrogen so to calculate our molecular mass, remember, what we need to do is look at the atomic mass of each of the elements and then add them together in the correct proportions. So because we've got our carbon monoxide there, that's made of one carbon and one oxygen. Carbon has an atomic mass of 12. Oxygen has an atomic mass of 16. So 12 plus 16 gives us 28. Then for our hydrogen there, that little 2 means that there are two hydrogens. So that means that we're going to have to do 2 times by the atomic mass of hydrogen, which is 1, and that gives us our answer of 2. So the last thing we need to do then is to put those numbers we've worked out into our actual equation for atom economy. So our first bit is our mass of the desired product, which in this case is hydrogen, and its mass is 2. And then we're going to divide that by the total masses of all of our products. So in this case, we're making carbon monoxide and hydrogen. So that's 28 plus 2, which gives us our 30. So what we're going to be doing then for our final calculation is 2 divided by 30, and then multiplying that by 100 to give us our answer of 6.7%. So for those of you doing the higher tier paper, you do actually need to do slightly more complicated calculations. Now, what I'll do here is I'll take you through the kind of thing I mean by a more complicated equation, okay? 
So what we've got here is our next example question, which is that hydrogen can be made by reacting steam with methane. And again, you'll be given the equation for the actual reaction on the exam paper. So just like the previous time, what we need to do is obviously underline our useful product in the question, which in this case is again hydrogen. So step two then is we need to work out our molecular masses for all of our products. So what we've got are carbon monoxide again. So we know that the atomic mass of carbon is 12. The atomic mass of oxygen is 16. So 12 plus 16 gives us 28. Now the slightly more complicated side is when we come to look at our hydrogen. Now we know that the atomic mass of hydrogen is 1. And we can see from the little subscript 2 there that there are two of them. So we know it's going to be 2 times 1 first of all. And then in front, we can see that big number three. That tells us that there are three molecules of our hydrogen. So what we need to do is three times by the two. So that will give us six as our molecular mass of our hydrogen in this case. So the last stage then is we need to actually use that atom economy calculation and put the numbers in. So first thing is our molecular mass of the desired product, which is our hydrogen is going to be 6, which is 3 times 2, remember, and then we're going to divide that by the total molecular masses of all of our products. So 28 plus 6 is 34, so our final calculation then is going to be 6 divided by 34 times by 100 to give it as the percentage, which gives us 17.6%. Now that is as complicated as it gets. So all you've got to remember is to follow those same rules of chemistry that we do when we're working out the masses of any formula is to make sure that you're multiplying up if there's a number in front or the numbers afterwards.